evening, good evening, and welcome, welcome to another episode, segment of Life Talk Live at CBC TV, and it's Life Talk Live because we live life live, it's something that we do, we don't play it, we live it, and uh, we need to know how to live our lives, so welcome everyone. I'll give everybody a chance to get on, and for those who are listening on YouTube, we say hi. We're on YouTube Live. Remember, if you ever lose your or a live stream on Facebook, go to YouTube, Center Ridge Bible Church, and we say hi to our friends on Facebook Live, and uh, wish you all well. Um, my name is Pastor Scott from the Center Ridge Bible Church. Uh, I am a, a mental health counselor, and... Uh, been doing this for quite a while, or well, being a counselor for quite a while. Uh, hey guys, how are we doing? Saying hi to Jen. I see Fernando. Good to see you guys. Some of you, if you don't hear me say your name, because not everyone's name comes up, it's strange. My phone doesn't pick up everybody. Uh, I think only if you make a comment the, does your name pop up. So if you want to get a shout out to, or a thumbs up, or anything, you have to put a little like up or a thumb up or something. Anyway, um, so this is where we meet every Tuesday, and I'm going to say it a couple of times just so everyone knows. I'll say it a little bit later. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, there will be no Life Talk Live. Uh, we just won't be able to have it that night. A couple of things uh, making that impossible. And but we'll be back the week after. And uh, let's see what else is going on. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 p.m., uh, our Bible study. Uh, we're in a series called, If God is So Good and Wonderful, Then Why Does He Allow Evil and Suffering? And that's going to be part two tomorrow night. And um, don't be uh, afraid to comment on that, and I, I know we don't interact as much, uh, we, don't, we don't interact at all really, on Wednesday Night Live, uh, but you can make comments and uh, they will always get back to me, and if you have questions that you didn't hear me answer, uh, I will get back to you. Try our best to get back to everyone, can't get back to everyone, but we try our best. Uh, so that's Wednesday. Uh, Sunday is Easter Sunday, and uh, we just have a morning uh, service. There'll be no evening service like we normally have. And uh, if you like to hear uh, a message that is usually very unique and not like, well, I can guarantee you, you won't be hearing Sunday what you're hearing everywhere else. Uh, I don't like to do cliche sermons and messages. I hate doing things that everyone is doing because you're supposed to do it. So we're going to do something unique and special on Sunday. Uh, would be a good message to, if you're watching on Facebook Sunday, to uh, share with a friend uh, you know, who doesn't quite understand things. Uh, so uh, I always try to make that a very understandable message, especially on Easter Sunday. So we will bring Easter to you in a very unconventional way, because I like to be unconventional. I think you guys hate things that are just cliche and have been done a hundred times over the same thing, and uh, people yawn. I don't want people yawning. I want people... You know, I'd rather have people angry. Uh, I'd rather have people angry than people yawning at church. So, we will talk about some things and say some things that will ruffle feathers. Right? Everyone likes likes it when I'm controversial. Yeah, it's all it's okay for you guys, but I'm the one who's got who's got to deal with all the feedback. Okay, Pastor Scott, be controversial. We love it when you do that. Yeah, but there's always a course, guys. Remember that. Keep me in prayer. Um, anyway, uh, Life Talk Live, don't forget we have a phone number to text uh, your concerns and comments, uh, 631-769-6712, and that's not just for tonight, it's 24-7 really, that number is active and you can text it, uh, 631-769-6712, and we have an email, 
life talk live seven at gmail.com the word life talk the word the number seven hey rich how you doing um and at gmail.com and that is always active prayer requests concerns complaints questions comments whatever you want to say hey dawn how you doing there uh yes thank you keep praying for poor old pastor scott um and uh so send us your concerns and your comments Let's see, what else did I want to say tonight? Yes, we're going to be picking a word, I promise you, for our topic that we never know. Uh, but we're going to talk about some trivia. Uh, we're going to be going with classic rock trivia, especially 80s trivia, music trivia, even pop music. Uh, you know, I listen to all kinds of music. Um, I don't know if anyone uh, ever got the answer to the question a couple of weeks back, or maybe it was last week, I asked you, um, the term heavy metal, okay, was actually coined uh, one man that I'm sure you never ever heard of uh, was the first band to be reviewed by a uh, magazine and called them heavy metal. Okay, now what's interesting about that band, and they are famous, uh, they toured all over the world, they had a couple of records out, they were a heavy metal band before heavy metal was in vogue and the big trivia is that band uh we have someone in our church who played an instrument in that band for a short time uh, and uh, if you can guess that i tell you if you can guess what that band is okay and it's not what you think it's not black sabbath black sabbath wasn't the band that coined the term heavy metal uh, that term came around much later but there is a band that was uh, the first band to be called Heavy Metal. If you get that band, which I will be blown away, unless you cheat, uh, you will get more than one prize. I will give you many prizes, because we have these cool Racing with Jesus stickers. We got these cool cups here, Life Talk Live on CBC TV. We have a hot cup for your car. We got some cold cups with Life Talk Live on them. We have a water bottle with Center Reach Bible Church on them. So we have a lot of cool gifts for you. Uh, so that's question number one. I have another question, okay? I'm going to give you guys some time in the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, what musicians in heavy metal bands are actually Christians, okay? Uh, I know quite a few that will surprise you, and if you could come up with them, I know some drummers, uh, a bass player, uh, you'd be surprised uh, that have played and still play in some famous bands, but they are Christians. Uh, also, I think I asked you guys another trivia question. Uh, we were talking about Van Halen. Uh, I think the first question I asked you, well, I asked you about who was there original choice when David Lee Roth left, and you guys got that. Hey, Susan, good to hear from you. Good to see you there. So, and we found out that that was Patty Smythe uh, from Scandal. Uh, and then I asked you guys, what was Eddie Van Halen's guitar's name? His first guitar that he built from scratch, it had a name. And we also had another trivia question, because after David Lee Roth left, uh, we all know that Sammy Hagar took over that band, but how did uh, Eddie Van Halen hear or get the idea for uh, Sammy Hagar? It's a very unique story, so if you guys know any of that trivia, and I know you could just go on the Google and cheat, but we ask that you wouldn't cheat. So we got a couple of questions, and I think the coolest one is that band that... Um, uh, was the first band ever, and it's proven to be factual. You'll be surprised, the first heavy metal band. Anyway, so tonight, Life Talk Live, and uh, we're going to pick a word. Let's just do that right now. We'll shake the hat up, okay? And what did I want to say? Just make sure I forget this right. Don't forget, no Life Talk Live next week, just next week, and then we'll be back to normal. Okay, let's see if we get a word that's not insane. We always get these insane words. Okay, okay, that's a good one. The word is anger. Okay, put it right 
away the word that pops into my head. Anger rests in the bosom of fools. The Bible says that's the first scripture that popped into my head. So that's going to be the word for tonight, anger. And we usually go off on different tangents. And uh, don't forget to interact, uh, share a story if you have a comment. Uh, uh, if, you've, if you're struggling with anger right now, is anybody struggling with anger right now? Put your thumbs up. Anybody out there? If you're struggling with anger, and it could be anger towards other people, but you know what? How many times are we angry at ourselves? Right now, I'll tell you a little personal thing. I'm angry at myself. I won't tell you why, but I am. Uh, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy, and I hate it when I when I'm me. <laughs> I hate it when I'm me, and it makes me angry. Uh, so let's. Let's bring this to the Lord and uh, bring in His wisdom, because my wisdom is really not that great at all without Him. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for tonight. Uh, we thank you for this format. We thank you, Lord, that even through this horrible thing of COVID and all this crazy stuff, uh, it really spawned this show, Lord, and took it from a group counseling session that we used to have and, and made it into this live thing where many people can share what was going on downstairs in the church here. I pray that your wisdom would be here, your Holy Spirit, you touch the lives of those, whatever anyone is going through out there right now. I pray that you would touch them and they would feel that touch and that you would be with us, Lord, and you would give the winds a mighty voice and take this message to the four corners of the galaxies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Hey, Jen. Oh, she has a thumb. Are you are you angry at something, Jennifer? Darn, I know you people. If you're if you, you know what, it's it's almost a certainty. If you live on Long Island, you're probably angry about something. Because uh, that's what we do on Long Island. We're very angry people. And if we're not angry, we look angry. We always gotta puss on our faces. Okay. Let's see. What do we got for some scriptures here? The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Psalm 145, 8. Okay, I love it when I read those scriptures. I love it that He is not like us. You know, we always think, gee, it would be great if God was like us, but it wouldn't be. It would be horrible because I know me. I don't want to be God. You wouldn't want me to be God. Um... Let's see, we have a comment here. If you live with others, you will get angry at times. Amen, that's true. If you live all by yourself, okay, well, you could be angry too. It really, it's an equal opportunity <laughs> emotion. Um, uh, let's see, Dawn says, I used to be angry, but I'm making great strides. Amen, amen. Because remember, joy and anger cannot rest in our hearts at the same time. It just can't. Did you ever think about that? You can't be angry and happy at the same time. Uh, so it's something that really steals our joy. Let's see what else here. Um, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth for a moment. Okay, that's God's anger. It means he does get angry, but it's very short-lived. In his favor is life. When we do the right thing, we get God's favor. Weeping may endure for a night, means a short season, but joy comes in the morning, all the time. And you know what, if, if we're going to learn anything, I mean, we can know about God's anger, uh, but it's easy to know about His anger. It, he is very slow to get angry, He is of great compassion, He's very merciful. Uh, he might get angry, but He lets it go and moves on. And... I don't think our concern should be, well, I mean, partly concerned with God being angry. We don't want Him angry, but uh, the problem is when we're angry, we need to respond like God responds, and that's a problem because we are humans. Um, hey, how do you say that name? We have a new person here. Ruthen? Ruthen McGregor, how you doing? Uh, Dawn, what do you say? Being angry just depletes our energy and takes us down the wrong path in life. That is true. Many times when you're angry with a person, uh, 
you know, the anger between two people, okay, might, you know, spur something, but normally one person lets it go and moves on, and there's one person left behind who lives with that anger forever and ever and ever, long after the other person has let it go and moved on and is just enjoying life. You know, I, I heard it once said, the best revenge, even though we should never get revenge, vengeance is the Lord's, uh, but is good living, okay, if, you know what, trying to spite someone, or get them back, or have them see your way, uh, it doesn't do anything for you. What it does is it just depletes our joy. And, uh, you know, if you want to be successful in a situation where someone is, and that you have an issue with, okay, treat them the way God treats us. Uh, treat them the way you would want to be treated. Love on them. The Bible says, you know what, pray for those who despitefully use you and abuse you. Love them. doesn't mean you have to like them, and that's an important thing. It doesn't mean you have to like everyone, but you do have to love them. Uh, you might not like what they do. Uh, it's like with our kids. Uh, I always love my kids. I certainly always don't like them. Uh, let's see, Carol Ann is with us, all the way from North Carolina. Uh, Carol Ann says, I was so angry for, for six years, uh, five years, wanted vengeance. Then it was like a switch, and I gave it to God. Forgave it, and poof, all the uh, rage and desire for vengeance dissipated, or dissipated, and my life changed for the better. Amen. That's a wise story, and that is proof. Okay? You can choose to live in anger and say, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be happy until that other person, you know, falls apart or gets destroyed or gets what's coming to them. That's not the way to live. Okay, we cannot live in that path. And anger, you know what? Again, the Bible says anger rests in the bosom of fools. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who are angry today about the nation. Okay, we could be angry about it. Uh, but if that anger consumes every waking moment of your life, I mean, what is it doing for the present situation? It, it really can't change anything. I've shared this once, and I'll, I will share it probably a hundred more times, my, my new way of living, and me and my wife every morning, we start off with God, we have this day, I do not know. Uh, anything about tomorrow, but I do know that I will make it from this morning until tonight. That's all that God promises us. And uh, yes, Psalms. Psalms is a good place to look. Uh, and just focus on today, uh, because uh, we are not promised tomorrow. Uh, you know, that anger, you know, you have to put anger through a filter, okay? when we think about what we're angry about, because it's not always, you know, anger is a sin, but not always. Because the Bible speaks about something called righteous indignation. Okay, because if anger was a sin, then God would be sinning when he's angry. See, there are times when we can be angry. There are things that I'm angry about. I'm angry about, you know, the babies that are killed in a womb. Okay, abortion, that makes me angry. I'm angry about the way our nation is going. Okay, when evil starts to rule over the good, that angers me. We, we're allowed to be angry about those things. When someone, you know, steals your car, uh, you're not going to be happy about it. You're, you know, angry about it because evil was done. Okay, so we can be angry if it's something that is proper to be angry about. But even at that, we need to let that go because so many of us live our lives uh, uh, with anger about things that happened so many years ago that what's the point? Uh, we have another comment here. Oh, Laura Jean is with us tonight. Um, you've tried to let it go, but the other person always repeats and thinks it's not a big deal. How many times can someone take it or just walk away? Well, that is a true thing, and that's one of those things we have to make a choice. You know, anger is a choice, um, because with anger, well, what's the next step in anger? Well, forgiveness. Anger is 
the close relative of forgiveness, to make anger go away, uh, not so much the reason why the person made you angry, okay, but how you respond to that anger. One of the things is to forgive and say, you know, like, we got Christ up on the cross. We're going to be talking about that Sunday. Lord, I mean, if anyone had a right to be angry, it was Christ on the cross. God the Father, as his son, was betrayed and beaten and ridiculed and left for dead and ultimately killed. But what did Jesus say? Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Um, many people uh, can't let go of that. Uh, some people say, well, you know, God can do that, I can't do that. Well, no, that's not true, because if God tells us to uh, uh, be not angry, then that means we have the capability to be not angry. Hey, Yolanda, Yolanda's here with us. Uh, what does she say? I found by praying for the person you are angry with helps relieve the anger. That is true, and the reason why it's true is because it's from the Bible, Okay. Jesus says to pray for those who despitefully use you and abuse you and say all manner of evil amongst, uh, about you. But remember this, it doesn't mean pray that, I pray that they get a flat tire today. I pray that they have a miserable day. No, that's not the kind of prayer. The prayer is that you pray that God would bless them if they don't know Christ, that they would come to know Christ. And in my years as a pastor, uh, and even before then, as a Christian, I learned I've had many enemies over the years. And when I would read that, pray for my enemies, I'd say, wow, God, that's hard. But I'm going to do it. And like Yolanda said, it was a real, it's just so weird, especially in your prayers, to say that person's name. Go down the list. Father, so-and-so, I pray today that they would have a good day, that they would encounter you, Lord, that they would be moved, that they would grow. To say those words about someone, and sometimes who have hurt us very, very deeply. That's hard to do, but you know what? It wasn't hard. It was hard and not hard at the same time. It's like, you know, if you ever saw, Pastor Scott is not a big water person. I don't like going in the cold water. It, it, if Either you have a heated pool, I'm not going in it. I don't like cold water. And if you ever saw me at the beach... I see people, they run, they jump into the water, they jump into the pools. I'm like, my little toe goes in there. And you know what? It's more painful to go in gradually. It takes me like an hour to get up to my waist. But when it comes to getting past anger, you can't do it a little bit at a time. You have to dive in. Full, you know, do the cannonball of forgiveness into anger. Um... Let's see, Vanda has another comment here. God has plenty of reason to be angry with me. I remind myself all the time, and he forgives me. Yes, he has plenty of reasons to be angry at us. Uh, and he still loves us. And he doesn't, you know what? What does God say about, you know what? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, First John 1, 9. As far as the east is from the west, the book of Psalms says, has he hid our transgressions from us? You see, God does do something that we can do. Uh, we can, it's, it's not impossible for us, but it's certainly something that God can do. Uh, God doesn't just forgive us. He forgets it. He moves on, and he says, okay, that was then. You confessed it. You put it under the blood. Let it go. Let's move on. Okay? And... That's what we have to do. But, you know, getting back to that other comment about, you know, let's say you have to face someone each day at work, at school, in your family that you have a real issue with. And what if they're giving you, you know, the stink guy? They're giving you sarcasm. Uh, you feel the tension whenever you see them. Because I don't know about you, but are there people in your life that you've, when you run into them at Sam's Club or the store, you're like, you try to hide you know, like, oh, no, I see him around the corner in that, on that aisle. I'm not going that way. Um, but sometimes we run into them. And you know what's interesting about us? Uh, we have a memory like an elephant. 
that means we don't forget and it's triggered easily. You can, and I've seen this happen in so many people, and I've seen it happen in my life. I have you know, spurts where I get over that. I love that person, I'm done with it, I'm over it, I'm moving on. But then something reminds me about that person, like running into them. And then all of a sudden you walk away because, you know, the truth is we're all a bunch of phonies because I don't know about you, but if you ever meet someone in the store that you don't like, what do you do? Hey, how's it going? Everybody gives a big, oh, wow, great to hear you. Your kids are honor students, wow. And you're thinking in your head, my kids sprung out on drugs. And I hate you that your kids are honor students. And you walk away, you know, we play this, this game but it's so fake. I think we would really be better up to saying, you know what, I really don't like you. <laughs> uh, I hope everything is well with you, but I'd rather not talk to you. <laughs> Can you imagine saying that? Be the, uh, I, I think there was a uh, Seinfeld episode with Elaine, and they called her the queen of confrontation. Uh, or maybe it was Kramer. He, was, he would just say things. He would just say it move on. It's like, wow, can you imagine if we just said what we felt, right? Well, don't say anything at all. Do you, do you know that false flattery is a sin the Bible talks about? How many times do you ush and gush over people, uh, you know, because everyone else is, and a perfect place is that, I tell you, it makes me laugh, is on Facebook. You know, someone shows, hey, I got this new thing, or I knew that, or I knew whatever, and everyone's going, hey, you look wonderful, hey, wow, you know, do you really feel that way, or are you just saying it because you have to say it because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings? Well, how about we just don't say anything? You know, we, you know, false flattery is something that we use a lot uh, in the world. It's called brown nosing. Okay, if you're at work and you're very, you know, the boss, you know, gets a new haircut and everybody kisses up to the boss and says, hey, great haircut and. Because you want the boss to like it. You know what? If you're saying it because you have a private agenda, it's sin. We would be much, much better off if we would just say nothing. If, you know, uh, you know, you run into that person who deeply hurts you. You know, uh, there's really a fine line because you got to love the person, okay? You can't be rude, you know, but you don't have to be phony either. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's okay to let that person know by your demeanor that, you know, you're not okay with this, okay? You are hurt. And at the end of the day, if you think about it, really, if you have two people who do the right thing, the situation is going to be diffused. But what does that mean? Well, you know, someone's going to have to apologize. And it's okay to pray for that other person that one day they would you know, you know, apologize to you, but don't wait your whole life for it, okay? You could say, you know, Father, Lord God, I, I wish if I ran to that person, they would just say, you know what, I was wrong, I'm so sorry I hurt you, will you forgive me? And I tell you, what if they did, okay, you would, you would have to really let that go. Would you accept someone's request for forgiveness? Or would you say, no, it's not enough? I know people... I mean, in my life as a pastor, I mean, uh, hurt people's feelings, whatever it is, it just comes with the territory. And um, no matter what I said, okay, I could apologize up and down, you know, what can I do for you? Uh, the person cannot be satisfied, cannot be satisfied. Um, Let's see, what does Dawn say here? Carol, Carol Ann first. Oh, Carol Ann. Okay, you, you first here. God, forgive them because they do not know what they do. That's why that's what Christ said. Most people who harm others are just ignorant and have no capacity for empathy and need God, so that's why you pray for them. Well said, Carol Ann. Absolutely perfection. Okay, I, we should send Carol Ann something for that answer because that's a good answer. Now everybody wants to talk if they want. They want stuff. <laughs> The one says, uh, Alison Krauss, who I like, Alison Krauss. Hey, Alison Krauss did a solo project with a famous heavy metal star. Okay, if you know who that was, you get a point. Anyway, Alison Krauss' uh, song says, you, can't, uh, you say it best when you say nothing at all. That's true. 
Sometimes the best thing is not to put on the big, hey, how you doing? Sometimes it's just to be not, you know, not cold shoulder, but hi, how you doing? That person needs to know that you're not okay with what happened. And sometimes our biggest problem is, is that other people don't know we're angry about something. We won't say it. Sometimes we need to say, hey, you know, either send them an email or a text and say, listen, I have to get this off my chest. I'm angry at you about something. Sometimes people really don't know. And do you know how I know this is true? Because I have had people just recently, as a matter of fact, this just happened Sunday. Uh, someone hadn't, hadn't been at church for a while. And, and they came, and they came, and, uh, and I said hi to them, but it was, you know, if you ever go to any church in the morning before everything starts, I was running around, I had problems with the eating system, I was trying to get that worked out, and, you know, it came back to me from someone else, hey, you know, so-and-so is a little bit upset with you, you know, they thought you were going to be excited to see them, and some people want like, Hey, I'm so glad you're back, big hug. And I really was excited after I thought about it that they're back. But, you know, sometimes our minds are someplace else. And you know what? If someone didn't tell me that so-and-so was angry at me, well, not angry, but just they were expecting me to be really excited, they finally were able to come back. If, if someone wouldn't have told me that, I wouldn't have known. And that person would have just been going with the you know, with the thought, wow, Pastor Scott didn't really care I was back. He didn't even, you know, acknowledge me. And and I did contact that person. I did. I said, I really apologize. And, you know, and they accepted the apology. And, we, we, you know, they understood. Uh, but sometimes if the other person does not know or, or you don't know that someone's angry at you, you know, you, you know, what do you do, the cold shoulder treatment? I mean, ask anyone who's married. I mean, that's like the weapon of choice. Well, I said, I'm not talking to them now. That'll show them real good. You know, and it's so childish. It really is. It doesn't really accomplish anything. Uh, Yolanda. Okay, Yolanda. Oh, we did uh, Jendo. The hardest words to say is, I'm sorry. That's true. Mm -hmm. That is true. It's, it's not for me, I tell you. I, have, I, I don't like to brag. I will brag about this because God has given me the victory, and maybe I say it so much uh, because I'm just so used to it. You know, I took the I'm sorry plunge. I should have a t-shirt, okay? I'm going to start a new movement, okay? You know, uh, I'm sorry, and it feels good to say it, right? Imagine if everyone started, imagine if all the political, you know, I was wrong about this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You don't hear it. I mean, uh, what's that? Song by what's his name that I don't like? Uh, honesty. Honesty is such a lonely word. Everyone is so confused. Billy Joel. Okay, uh, and so is sorry. Sorry is a lonely word. Uh, how many times? You know, take a poll here, people. How many times has anyone came up to you and said, "You know what? I owe you an apology. I'm sorry." It doesn't happen. I mean, you could probably count it on one hand your entire life. Um, let's see here. What else here? Uh, Yolanda says, thank God for giving us Christ Jesus. Uh, I fall short every day. Amen. Uh, gee, without forgiveness, gosh, where would we be? I, I never appreciate God's grace. You know, I always have a new sense of appreciation for God's grace when I sin and I need it badly. I want God's forgiveness. Uh, it seems like when I'm really doing well, and I'm really keeping myself clean, I start to forget. You know what? That's a slippery slope. I want to share that quickly. Uh, you know, I've been on a, on a run of righteousness, and uh, you know what is the ugly sister to righteous, holy living? Arrogancy and pride. Because, you know, before, <laughs> before a fall comes pride. I find that when I'm on a, a spurt of doing really good, I start to say, hey, I'm looking pretty good. And I start to preach a little bit more heavy. And then when I sin and I need God's forgiveness, I remember quickly, oh, and I become very humble. You can always know it when Pastor Scott did something wrong. 
uh, or when God is mad at him because you'll see me talking about mercy and grace. That means I need mercy and grace, and I appreciate it so much, Lord, and I take it for granted. Uh, Jennifer Dorn says, my three- and four-year-olds refuse to apologize, and I know Jen down in Florida, uh, she works with uh, young kids, and uh, yeah, is that a hard thing? Uh, what do we tell our kids? Isn't that interesting? We don't have to teach, I just spoke about this Sunday, we don't have to teach our kids uh, to be bad, right? They know how to do that automatically. We have to teach them to be good. And that really just screams what God says. We're all born. You know, man at his best state is altogether vanity. There is none righteous, no, not one. Uh, but also, don't we always have to tell our kids, say you're sorry to Johnny, say sorry to your father, say sorry to your mother. And they put that puss face on, not going to do it. Okay? We don't like saying sorry. You know what? Because we don't have much practice. We don't have much practice. Uh, Laura Jean says, I think it's it's harder confronting the person uh, with an issue. Well, yeah, it absolutely. It's harder confronting them with the issue. That's why we're all cowards. And we, uh, and, uh, uh, who was, uh, I was dealing with someone last year, maybe two years ago, and uh, I think I shared this. They wanted, they were angry at me. People were always angry at me. I don't know why. Uh, I know I rub people the wrong way, but they were very angry at me, and they sent me an email. I think I told you guys this, and I said, I'm not going to open that email. Uh, because they were sending me a text about the email. I'm sending you a text. Read that email. And I knew what the email was going to be. The person was very upset, and they just said probably things that they're going to regret. And I said, my friend, I am not going to read that email, because I know one day you're going to regret that I see it. You're in a bad way. You're angry at me. You're going to say a lot of things that you don't mean, and then our relationship is going to be hurt. And you know, that person was so furious, and I said, if you have an issue, meet with me. Give me a call, or let's meet in my office and talk. They would not do it. I said, let's, let's sit down together, and let's discuss this. Nope. I want you to read the email. And I would not, and they were furious. And to this day, I, I took it, and I hit the powerful delete button, okay? I'm not going to read it. And you know what happened later on? That person said, I'm glad you never, you never read that email uh, because I said a lot of bad things to you. I said, I know, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so confronting the person is a hard thing, but it is the biblical thing. What does the Bible say? If you have ought or a problem against another person in church, what does the scripture say? You know what? This is one thing we never do in church. The Bible says this. We never do it. You're supposed to confront that person, not tell ten other people to tell that person, not spread, you know, a whole bunch of rumors and things about it, not post it on Facebook, not send texts and emails. You're supposed to, okay, go to that person, say, hey, can I, have, uh, uh, can I talk to you for a second? And remember the praise sandwich that I always tell you guys about. Uh, but we never do it. And the Bible says, actually, and if that brother won't receive you, go with two or three witnesses, okay? Bring other people with you, okay? Because if you don't have someone to back up your story, okay? Because you need a, a third party sometimes, a mediator. Uh, but we don't do And the Bible says if they still won't hear it, we're supposed to bring them up in front of the church. Can you imagine that on a Sunday morning, bringing someone up and saying, these two people have a a problem together. Uh, we need to bring it in front of the church, and they need to work it out right now, Sunday morning. Can you imagine that? It's what the Bible says. Can you imagine? Wow. Can you imagine obeying God? <laughs> what would happen? I bet you people would be so mortified about that being the response that they would not be angry with anyone. I ain't doing that. Forget it. It's not that big of a deal. And we move on. You know what? If it's if it's something that you're angry about that you're not willing to stand with that person, sit with them and talk to them, and you can only do it via email or little secret notes, then it's not that big of a deal if it bothers you that much. True story, okay? I'll give you a true story uh, about someone that I had in a problem with, and uh, I knew they were doing something uh, in their company, the business, they were a Christian from church at the time, and somebody that I sent to them, 
who was not a Christian, went to them and, and came back to me and said, hey, you're a big shot Christian friend there. You know, he's doing a bunch of dishonest stuff with his company, and it's really nasty. And I didn't know uh, uh, what to do, and I prayed about it, because now I have one person saying that my good friend that I love is doing something dishonest, I don't know if it's true. Do I go and confront that friend? Do I tell them, or do I just let it go? Or do I tell the person that I sent to my friend, you know, it's not true, he would never do that. But I was left in a situation, and uh, hey, Eric, we say hi to Eric right there, good to see you. Um, so I prayed, okay? First, <laughs> so first note about if you have an issue with anger with someone that you have to deal with, pray about it, pray for it, pray it before you say it, okay, pray, and say, God, what do I do, and I prayed for a long time, I'm talking a couple of weeks, I really was just tormented, and I said, God, what do I do, this is so uncomfortable, and uh, I actually called the person up, finally, and I felt so led, I said, I have to meet with you in person, and I remember, this was years ago, uh, here at the church, we actually met in the parsonage before, before I was ever a pastor here, and I said, let's meet in the parsonage, because the pastor didn't, uh, I'm the first pastor to live back there, that was just classrooms. So, um, I met with the person, he had no idea what I was going to say, and I met with them, and I said, my friend, I love you, man, I love you in Christ. I heard something, because uh, they wanted to know, what do you want to talk about? Are you driving? I said, I just... I don't want to say it until we meet. So I said, something was said about you that I'm not going to believe it unless I hear it from you first. You tell me it's not true, it's over. That's all I need to hear is from you. It's not true. But I told him, I said, somebody that I knew that I sent to you says you're doing A, B, and C dishonesty. Is that true? And you know what? He said, yeah, it's true. It's true. Thank you for calling me on it. The person thanked me. And we were able to say, yeah, you know what? We fall into these traps. And, uh, you know, and you know what's interesting? Later on, that person, you know, they were doing some unethical things. And I think that was a wake-up call, but they didn't heed it. And they ended up getting caught by the authorities, uh, New York State. And they almost lost a lot. And it was after that bigger thing that they say, you know what, God is definitely telling me, stop being, you know, dishonest with my customers. And, you know, maybe not big things, but things that are still dishonest. But maybe if that person would have heeded what I said, you know, sooner, they wouldn't have had the bigger slap. But, but I did, you know, and, but that person did, you know, our friendship stayed great, we're, we're great friends to stay, they thanked me for it. Um... And, uh, yeah, it was, it took a lot of strength to do that. I did not want to do it. I hated it. I thought I was going to throw up, you know, having, like, why do I have to deal with this? But it was so heavy on my heart. But the reason why I was forced to deal with it is because I was working with a friend who I sent to this guy. I'm telling him all about Christ and God is great and my Christian friends are so awesome. And then to hear that, it was a slap in the face to Christ. So I knew this had to be uh, dealt with. So once I met with my friend, I went back to my co-workers, and he was shocked. I said, I want to let you know. Uh, remember you said about the guy I sent you to who was doing stuff dishonest? Uh, well, I met with him. And you know what? You're right. He was. And, uh, and he needed to be called out on that. And I tell you, that person, my co-worker, was really impressed with that. They couldn't believe that I was so concerned about that and that I didn't try to hide it. I said, no, that was an improper thing. You are absolutely right. And I, I'm, I apologize. And you know what? That's why you know, we need Christ. Yeah. You know what? None of us are uh, going to be perfect. But isn't that strange how, you know what, when we call ourselves Christians, the unsaved world, they watch us. They expect perfection. And we better mind our P's and Q's because they're going to catch us. Okay, we're ambassadors for Christ. 
And it's just, I know sometimes it stinks. I hate that part of being a Christian. I really do. I don't want to be good all the time. Uh, sometimes I almost want to run away and hide and play. But what, did, uh, what does it say? I think it was David said, Lord, where can I go from your presence? If I go down to the deepest part of the sea, you're there. If I go to the highest mountain, you're there. What does that mean? <laughs> you can't run from God's Holy Spirit. It, there's no secret place to go and have fun where God's not going to find out. It, you know what? He's going to know. But because He loves us, He's going to, you know, God tells us when we do wrong, He straightens us out. If we're wise, we listen. And we say, you know what? Thank you, God, for straightening me out. Doesn't mean we're not going to do it again. We probably will. But, uh, you know. The trivia question. Oh. Why, do we have an answer? Well, the, who... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I was just reminded by my large staff here uh, and crew, and stage prop masters and <laughs> key grips and uh, well, camera crew and lighting crew. No, it's only one person. It's only Sally. Um, uh, then I have to give you the trivia answers, okay? Um, because no one's... Uh, is, what am I trying to say? No one has given us the answer. So, okay... Who or what band, okay, is a famous band that you probably never heard of that was the first band to be called Heavy Metal? Okay, and it's, and you can check it on Wikipedia, it's in there. And the band is Sir Lord, Sir Lord, oh, how do you say the last part? Sir Lord Baltimore, Sir Lord Baltimore. Very strange name for a band. Sir Lord Baltimore. No, and it's not Striper. And do you know who played bass in that band for a short time? Our very own Sam Powell. And Sam Powell is actually, if you look up the history of that band, his name comes up as one of the bass players for that band. Uh, they are a famous band. So the band that was... Uh, coined the term heavy metal, uh, our very own worship leader, Sam Powell, played bass in that band. And he was actually asked to go tour with them when I first met him, actually, to go over to Europe. They were going to reform the band. And uh, interesting thing, even before Striper, uh, they started off as a doom heavy metal band, and they ended up as a Christian heavy metal band. Okay. So that's that answer. Uh, the other question, okay, just a little bit of trivia. I'm going to give you some trivia. Uh, who are some Christian musicians in hard rock and heavy metal bands? Okay, number one is Tommy Aldridge. He is the drummer for, uh, he drummed for Ozzy right now. He's been in Whitesnake for many, many years. He was in Black Oak, Arkansas. Uh, famous, famous drummer, played uh, uh, with a whole bunch of bands, uh, but he's most known for being the drummer for Ozzy and Whitesnake. Tommy Aldridge, okay? Christian, you can see his testimony. He brings his drum set to a church and does a little drum clinic, and he's actually one of my favorite drummers. He was one of the first guys to really master uh, playing with the double bass. Matter of fact, Neil Peart from Rush learned some of his double bass tricks from Tommy Aldridge. So we have Tommy Aldridge, drummer, is a Christian. Rudy Sarzo, the bass player from Quiet Riot, from Ozzy, from White Snake, uh, from uh, he played in a lot of heavy metal bands. He's a Christian. The drummer from Iron Maiden, okay, Nicky or Nico McBrain with McBran, I think. McBrian. He's also a Christian. Very, very interesting. And you probably don't know, and this is going to shock you, that Alice Cooper, okay, Alice Cooper is a Christian. He's actually a PK, a pastor's kid. His father was a pastor, Christian, and he was raised in a Christian home. Obviously, he rebelled and he went way off into the dark side, but. Uh, uh, over the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, he came out, came out of the closet, 
and he's a Christian, and he's really toned down a lot of his stuff, and he loves the Lord. He talks bold about his faith. Really, really impressive. Uh, so you never know what God... You say, well, those people shouldn't be in those bands, but you know what? They are ministering to those in those bands, okay? Uh, those bands need to have a Christian influence there. And people might debate back and forth, should they be there or should they not? Uh, uh, but you know what? Jesus always ate with the sinners, right? Sam Powell, our own Sam Powell, uh, wrote a song called Eating with the Sinners because he was accused of, because uh, he plays in a bunch of secular bands. Uh, if you want one of the best Steely Dan tribute bands, and also he plays in a lot of wedding bands, and he plays in a Stevie Wonder uh, tribute band, uh, and he would get a lot of uh, complaints from Christians that he shouldn't be playing there. Why are you playing the music with those unsaved people? And it really upset him, and he wrote the song, Eating with the Sinners. And it's kind of a neat song, because it has background talking of, of people saying, Hey, I saw Sam out. He's hanging out with those bad people. Did you hear about what Sam's doing? You know? and, uh, and so Sam wrote a song called Eating with the Sinners, just like Jesus did. And uh, you know what? He's a light. And some of those people from those bands ended up coming to church here, a couple of them. One of the guys committed suicide, and you know what? The last you know, uh, note that he ever had was, you know what, he got to hear the gospel. So those are important things. Anyway, uh, we have a couple of minutes left. Anybody, any more comments on anger? Yeah, we've got to let it go. It's always going to be a problem. Oh, there's one more here. Okay, Carol Ann, is that what we're looking at? I prayed and prayed and then decided to listen to God as it was ruining my life. Lots of laughs. It only took six years, five years. So I uh, drove to my New York. I drove to New York and did uh, him a life. Veteran? Okay, life thing of kindness. I, I'm having trouble seeing you. Yes, the act of forgiveness and helping. Oh, there's more here. This is a bigger thing. Hold on here. Let me see if I can open this up. Uh, uh, took him out of the equation of my life, okay, and you know what, you know, she closed the door on that situation, come back, confront the person, say what has to be, you know, they might not receive it, they might not really believe that they did anything wrong, they probably won't, but you need to clean the slate and then let it go, be the better person, let it go, move on, okay, and let God deal with that person, okay, uh, so yeah, no, the band is not Black Sabbath that uh, everybody thinks it is that was the first band to be called heavy metal. They, that term didn't come out for uh, uh, a little while after that. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that's that. Any other questions or concerns? Uh, really uh, fun show tonight. Thank you for all the input and feedback. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget, next Tuesday, uh, we won't be on the air. Uh, just too many technical things that we uh, makes it impossible for us to be here. But we will be back the following Tuesday. And, uh, you know, we've really hardly ever miss a Tuesday. Uh, but next Tuesday, we will miss. Don't forget, tomorrow night, if God is so good and, and kind, why does he allow evil and suffering? That's part two of our multi-part series tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't be here in person, please listen online. Very, very important. Uh, we're going to be, and matter of fact, tomorrow night we're going to be going through the list of those really tough questions and see what God has to say about them. Uh, so that's tomorrow night. Don't forget Easter Sunday, just the morning service, and I have a very uh, odd uh, sermon I'm going to preach. Uh, I hate to be like everyone else. We're going to be breaking all the rules, so to speak, and not doing cliche Sunday morning messages about uh, the resurrection of Christ would be a good message uh, for those who don't know about Christ, who don't understand these things. And uh, that's what we'll be doing Sunday. And uh, Thank you, uh, Yolanda, for thanking Sally and the crew. <laughs>
Um, but I hear the music is playing. They're playing my song. And that means we're done and we're going to segue out. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Don't forget, you could win these valuable prizes, okay? We got cups, Light Talk Live on CBC TV. We have Center Beach Bible Church water bottles, a lot of fun stuff. I want to again thank Tammy and Rich for uh, making those for us and all the people behind the scenes. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of us tonight. God bless you.